Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome to the show right now. Um, this is an amazing story to go through. The book is called Kelly Tough. Please welcome to the show Aaron Kelly, Jim Kelly, maybe Jill Kelly. If she hey. wants to come <laughs> class as well. How are you guys doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we're having a great day. Um, the book here, um, I, I got to tell you, I, I read through... I was just finishing up the appendix parts about the Hunter's Foundation and everything, which we'll get to in a little bit here. I can't imagine just being the person reading this, how emotional this was, the turmoil and the emotional grief that you had to, just to put this together with the photos, with the stories. And how long did it take you to put all this together? It took about a year to put it all together. We actually started last summer just talking about writing a book and putting uh, my heart really on paper. That's really what this book is, is my heart on paper. And it was a struggle to write it because it was as if I was reliving the moments all over again. And just to be able to share deep moments with the world is definitely hard. But at the same time, it's so rewarding to know that our struggle can be an encouragement to someone else. Did you have any resistance from the family when you started putting this project together? Like, I don't really know if we should put our family's details out there like this. Absolutely. Everyone was completely on board. But there were times when at the beginning of my dad's treatments and everything that we were hesitant to share things, especially on social media, just because we knew that we could get some negative feedback from people, which we did. But at the same time, once we started putting things on social media, once we started sharing our story, we realized what an impact it was having, not only on other people, but on us. People were such an encouragement, letting us know that they were praying for us and just supporting us was incredible. And it definitely had an impact on my dad and everything that he was going through. Right. Uh, Your family, uh, for those who don't know about this book here, your family has had to deal with, um, I don't want to say cancer because it's too broad, but you know, different degrees of cancer there, both with your brother, with your father. Can you tell us a little bit about um, Hunter's situation? Because uh, I, when I was reading the book, I never heard of, of the disease that he had here, but it turns out it's pretty common in, in newborns and, and, and whatnot. He had crab A disease and he was diagnosed when he was very young and we were told that he would not live to see his second birthday. And so that was extremely hard and he was never able to eat or talk or walk on his own and he was completely disabled. And so for, but he ended up living to be eight and a half years old. But we learned so much through watching him struggle and through his sickness. And I've really... Although there was death surrounding that situation, we were told he wasn't going to live. There was so much life that he radiated. And we really started treating Hunter as if he was living because he was every single day. And he lived to be eight and a half years old. And that's incredible considering what the doctors told us was the diagnosis. And so this Kelly Tuff thing really started through watching Hunter struggle and seeing God's strength displayed in his frail body. And it's great that you did treat it that way because more people than not would take it as we don't know much how, how much time he has left and keep treating it like the you know the end is coming the next day the next day instead of just well let's live your life and and go till the very end there and and try to be positive and strong for him right absolutely and after watching him go through that and after just living life with him it really taught us to live fearlessly in every moment and I took that into watching my dad go through cancer and wanting to live every moment with him not knowing what the next day would hold not knowing if he would still be here tomorrow or the next day and so just cherishing every moment Uh, Jim if I can call you Jim or Mr. Kelly no Jim Jim is fine fine. Um, and you've been through your fair share of stuff too with different kinds of cancer with with your jaw and uh, with MRSA and everything and you've plowed through it and came back then there was a story that oh it went away and then it came back oh then it went away and then it went yeah. away again and like you've just been kicking this thing's ass since uh, since you found <laughs> out that you had it here there was something in the book that I found not disturbing but I couldn't relate to it is there was a chapter called I'm not afraid to die mm-hmm. and um, the fact that you had said this and that she got upset where do you find that kind of I guess solace where do you where do you come to that conclusion where you feel that it's okay at that stage well when you are are at your lowest uh, and how that makes you feel but you understanding that there's so many people that are around you that you are an inspiration and and for me I don't know what tomorrow holds nobody does and I knew the fight that I had 
in me, and I know what I've how I've lived my life. I knew that yeah, I, we all make mistakes, but I knew how I was blessed to be a professional athlete. How I was blessed to have a beautiful family, a beautiful wife, a son, and yeah, there were those ups and downs. But I also know where I'm at now with my life, with my faith. That I know that if tomorrow is the day that I go, well, at least I know one thing uh, that uh, I will see my son. And I can't. Well, I can't wait for that day because I have a lot more <laughs> yes, things to you can do. Wait. I have a lot more things to do, right, Aaron? <laughs> yes. And number one's walk That's her down the aisle, but not yet. We still got time. <laughs> She's still young. She just turned twenty. But the thing is, for me, is you know, in the past, I might not have said that, but I know where my faith is. I know what my heart feels like. I know what I've accomplished in my life. I know that I've been in an influence on people. But I want people out there to understand that, you know, through my fight. And through what I went through and to hear from everybody how much of an influence they've been on my life, how I want to continue to fight and how I will never, ever give up. And also to, to know that the, the girls that I've raised and, and the wife I'm married to, how I've, I've, I've been blessed and I'm having fun now. I'm enjoying my life. And I, even though I enjoyed my life before, it was a different type of an enjoyment. But also I look, I had more fun in my life than most people can say they can have in five lives. Mm-hmm. I mean, I really did. I mean, I went through some good times. I've been through some bad times, but I was brought up in a family of six boys to never give up on anything I've ever done. And I never will. And now I hopefully through what I've been through that teaches my two daughters uh, about life that sometimes, no, it's not fair, but there there are reasons for everything. And I know now why I've been a chosen father with a special little boy named Hunter that we can make a difference for others out there. And we have. And uh, I'm just happy that I'm able to share in this moment of my my daughter writing this book called Kelly Tough and how she journaled a lot of the things that she went through as a young kid and as how I brought her up to be strong, to be tough, and how she thought she was losing both her men in her life, her brother that she lost, and now am I going to lose my dad? And now how she had to stay strong, not only for herself, but and not only for me, but her little sister how she had to keep my my wife, her mother, strong through all this and how she is growing as a young kid and understanding that we all are going to go through things, but it's what you do about it, it's what counts, and uh, she's one strong lady. You mentioned something with faith, and it, that's a big theme throughout the book, a lot of uh, putting your hands in God and, and all that stuff. Were you always religious? Did you always have this? or like Where do you find God in, in these times of awfulness? It started with Hunter and watching him struggle through Crabbe and seeing my mom and grandma and how they sought after God in the midst of Hunter's suffering. And it really was Hunter's suffering that allowed us to look to the strength of God. And there was really nowhere else to go. And when you come to that place where you have nowhere else to go, we were looking to God's strength because we needed him. We needed someone, something that would give us hope in the midst of it. And so I took that faith and just ran hard after God and then watching my dad go through cancer completely turned to God and said, Lord, I don't know what you have planned for tomorrow. I don't know what this future holds. I don't know if my dad's going to make it through cancer, but I'm willing to trust you in the midst of it. I just find it fascinating that you were strong enough to do that where most people in that situation with your brother and then later on with your father would probably at that point be like, I've had enough of God or I'm not believing in this stuff because all this keeps happening and you did the exact opposite. Right. And through Kelly Tuff, I really want to encourage people that in the midst of whatever you're going through, because we all have our own stories, everyone has their own story of struggle, that in the midst of that, that you can turn to the strength of God in the midst of your weakness. And really, I want to encourage people to live a courageous and fearless life and to just turn to the strength of God when you can't go on on your own. Right. There was um, another chapter uh, that I actually had a, a question about forgiveness and the haters. Huh. And i um, reading this chapter here and, and I just got to ask because I, I really didn't want to get into too much uh, of the football stuff, uh, but it, it's kind of hard not to with your father being <laughs> who he is. But um, I imagine that for those who don't know who <laughs> know who Jim Kelly is, <laughs> Hall of Famer, football player, Super Bowls 91 through 94, going through four straight Super Bowls and, and having lost. And I, I can imagine, uh, if I can remember right, the re- a lot of resentment from people in Buffalo that you got there, but you didn't win. Did 
some of that, that dumbass sports nonsense, tra- <laughs> is that what transferred over for when he was going through this and you were getting that text message when you're saying, I hope your father dies like that? Was it still just that dumb resentment or was this something more personal that people were getting mad at him about? I really don't know. And that was the thing about that tweet that my sister, my younger sister and I received. And we just were in complete shock that anyone would have the hatred in their heart to say that to us. How old were you when you got that? It was just last year when he was going through his treatments and everything. And it was in the midst of a really tough battle with his treatments and everything. And he just wasn't doing good at all. And so to receive that tweet from someone really took a toll on us. You didn't know the person. No, we had no idea who they were. And so we really didn't have any clue why someone would say anything like that. (laughs) And we were doing an interview before this, and and I said, thank God she wasn't around when I was playing. (laughs) (laughs) She wouldn't have liked a lot of things that were said. But you know what? It's part of life, and and my daughters understand the professional sports. There are going to be good days. There are going to be bad days. There are going to be some things that say good about you. There are going to be some things that say bad about you. And the thing is, she is strong enough, even though those things do hurt, um, that was one of so many other people. But the thing is, it's being able to make a difference for people. And through this book and through my life, and even though there are people that probably still don't like myself, but the thing is, that's part of part of grown ups, part of the social media that we go through in, in today's society with people, you know, sometimes the old saying cliche is negative people got to be heard. Right. And I guess if that made that guy feel a little better, God bless him, man. And we'll continue to pray for him. That, that, that's what puzzled me. I mean, yeah. with all the stuff, I mean, because it wasn't unknown what your dad was going through. It was in all the papers, he <clears throat> and everything, um, which I can't imagine it was easy on you being a public figure going through something that personal and, and, and something that horrific. And to get something like that, it's just like there's a line between a sports fanaticism and, and all that stuff and what is real life. Like, you, all right, the guy maybe lost the game and, and you know not happy, but he's going through something bad. His family's had uh, a bad run of some things. It's like, you cut the guy some slack. Right? <laughs> Get over it. It's just a game. Yeah, and the thing is, I was one of the guys where when my wife uh, started to post things and wanted to do these things, I really didn't want to do it because I'm a private person. And, right. and, and maybe uh, Jill can tell you a little bit about why she thought that we needed to go more viral. We needed to make more people aware of what was going on. So probably... The best person to, you know, tell us is Jill. Well, hello. Hi. (laughs) I just love listening to all you guys talk about this because it's overwhelming, especially, you know, as Aaron's mother, um, the honor and blessing that it has been to watch her walk through all of this and then to pen it down into a book. But and of course, everything with Jim and all that we've been through as a married couple. It's our anniversary today, by the way. I know, 19, 19 I was going to say at, okay. the, at the end of the anniversary. That's right. Not the interview, but happy anniversary. Crazy. So, but ultimately, you know, I think that the main reason that I felt that it was necessary for us to share like we did and continue to do so is that everyone has something. Everybody's going through something in their life. And if they're not going through it now, they're going to walk into it or they just walked out of something. And if we can be an encouragement in the midst of our battle so that someone else receives strength from our story, then then we've done what we were supposed to do. This isn't about us. Um, and Aaron didn't write the book because it's about the Kelly family, although it's called Kelly Tough. Um, we're hoping to encourage people walking through their own battles. Right. And that, you know, and you, you talked about the the guy who sent that tweet hurt people people that are hurt they end up hurting other people so certainly you know we don't know what his battle was and we don't understand why he did that but at the end of the day the choice to forgive is always greater and better for the people who need to forgive um and so it's just it's been an interesting journey and i'm so thankful i'm running out of time with you unfortunately uh the book is called kelly tough it's out now uh amazon and wherever books are sold you can get it before you go can you just tell me real quickly uh, about hunter's hope my mom actually would probably be the best one to talk about hunter's hope they just want me to talk she yes we, that's we really quick joining don't you have a lot of time, time, have much time yeah hunter's hope was started um you know as a result of there was no cure no treatment no one was doing anything for the disease that hunter had and so we've rallied there's so many incredible things that are happening through the foundation to explain it and however much time we have would be insufficient and so i would suggest just listeners go to www.huntershope.org but we are a part of saving lives of children through 
through newborn screening, children born in our country. And so it's just been an honor to help other people going through what we've been through. Huntershope.org, uh, Twitter and Instagram, Hunters Hope FDN as well. So you can yes. follow along for, yes. uh, for information. Uh, again, the book is called Kelly Tough. I've been speaking with Jill, with Jim and Aaron Kelly. Hashtag Kelly Tough. Thank you so much for coming in. And I'm glad you're doing well. And then through everything with your family, you know, God bless. Thank, Thank you. you. God bless you. Thanks for having us on, bud. When it all amounts to nothing in